Are you downcast today? Are you worried or losing your peace today? Cheer up, my brother. Amen. God knows all about it. Yes. And we'll understand it too. All by and by. God will be faithful. Praise his name this morning. I'm glad you came to church. I don't want to disrupt the spirit, but I just want to let you know about a few announcements this morning. Thank you so much for uh, adhering to all these guidelines that allow us to have church right now in these days. Uh, the announcements have been rolling on the screen for the past hour, so I hope you availed yourself to those announcements. Also, there are announcements in the bulletin. Uh, we pay money for those, and we pay money for the ink, so please read them at least one time and avail yourself to the announcements in there. I do want to let you know, if you're visiting with us tomorrow morning or if you're not usually with us, we would appreciate it if you would fill out one of the yellow visitor cards that's in the pew in front of you. And in the absence of our offering plates in these times... If you would just stick that in the offering box, which is uh, located just behind the sanctuary, we would be appreciative. Randall Carlton is our head trustee. He's coming at this time to make a brief announcement. The pastor will come. Good morning. Uh, I want to thank all the volunteers that showed up yesterday morning from about 7.30 till about 1230. Uh, there's a lot of excitement. A lot of things was moving around. We got rid of a lot of the, the overgrown grass and a lot of sh rubbish in the fence line. And there's I can, at least 20 people I counted. And I want to thank you guys from, from the, I'm supposed to be the building and grounds trustee. So it's my job and things have gotten out of hand. But we're we looking up and we want to have another work day probably in the fall. Uh, but we had a great day yesterday, and I hope nobody gets any poison ivy. So we'll pray for all the workers that, none of that, but we've seen quite a bit of it. But uh, I really do appreciate everybody that worked yesterday. We was done by about 1230. And uh, so I really, thank you very much. We all give a hand. Thank you. I'm not even a little bit afraid of poison ivy or poison sumac or any of those other things that you can run into in fence lines because I wasn't in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's stand and begin our service with a time of prayer. Thank you, all your workmen and those who helped. Father, we've come to worship you, to glorify you, to praise you, and to lift up your name. We're thankful for the blessings you're pouring out in our lives and the grace that you keep showing us through your Son, Jesus Christ and the leadership and the blessing and the direction we receive by the voice of your Holy Spirit and by your written word, which keeps talking to us again and again. Oh God, come and fill our worship time with your own divine presence and receive our praise to you as an offering of love, because that's what it is. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing out as Pastor Tim Cooper. You've heard of preachers who get excited right before they're going to preach because they've been studying and they've been putting effort into what they're going to share from God's Word. And uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of a mu music minister being that way, but as I put this worship service together for this week, my heart has just been welling up and overflowing because this morning we're going to sing about the justifying grace of Jesus Christ. We're going to sing about the atoning work that He did on the cross. And one of the, one of the choruses that follows one of the verses we're going to sing, it says, My chains fell off. I was bound to sin, there was a ball and chain, I was a servant to Satan, but then my chains fell off and I experienced that glorious freedom that Christ gives from sin. And as Wesley and Arminians this morning, we celebrate that we can be freed from the carnal nature, we can be, have sin completely eradicated from our lives and serve God in that this morning. I'm excited. I hope you are too. Let's sing this hymn together this morning. Number 47, The Lord Jehovah Reigns. The Lord Jehovah Reigns. His throne is built on high. The garments He assumes are light and majesty. His glory So right, no mortal eye can clear the sun. The thunders of His hand keep the wide world in awe. His wrath and justice stand to guard His holy law. Oh 
archaic language, but I hope you found something in there that resonated with your experience and with your heart. And together with me and the whole church this morning, you can say, as the last line said, praise the Lord. Try it again this morning. Praise the Lord. Let's sing this great hymn of the church. And can it be number 225?
He left his father's throne full of glory. He condescended, bled for Adam's race. And because of that, I have victory. I can come boldly before the throne of God. What love of our father. Let's sing about that victory this morning. I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory. How he made the lay on Calvary to save us. I want 
found that to be a glorious, life-invigorating reality to belong to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's worship him as we go to prayer this morning. I've asked Reverend Hal Hutton to come and to lead us as we corporately pray. Let's sing that chorus one more time and let's stand together as we pray. Now I belong to Jesus. Father God, for the gift of your Holy Spirit that lives in each of us. What a joy and a privilege it is to have you in us, working in us and through us for your glory. It's a joy, Heavenly Father. We celebrate this morning. We are joyful. We're glad, Heavenly Father. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, as we think of how blessed a people we are, we know we can bring our cares before you and our, our burdens, and we can lay them at your feet and say, here you go, God. We come boldly into the throne room and we say, Lord, here it is. Every need represented by everyone in this sanctuary this morning, right now, we lift it to you. We put it at your feet and say, take it. Take it. And we walk away in assurance and faith, knowing that we've given it into the hands of Almighty God, where the power lies to deal with things as they need to be dealt with in the right time and the right way. And our heart is joyful that we can give you our burdens, our cares. And that we can be strengthened and encouraged. God, I'm going to thank you right now for everyone that's here this morning and those that are watching. Thank you for brothers and sisters in Christ. We need each other. If, 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 if this whole COVID thing has taught me one thing, it is I need brothers and sisters in the, in the family of God. And I'm thankful, Father, that we can be together. Because it's an encouragement to my heart and my soul. And I pray that it be an encouragement to each one who's bothered to come and those who have bothered to 
to listen to this online. Would you encourage them? Lord, those who feel alone, would you be near them right now? There are some that are so alone. Lord, be very near them at this very moment. Let them know how loved they are and precious they are in your eyes. Now, Lord, as we go forward with this service, I ask your anointing on every song yet to be sung, on the message from the Word of God. May it touch each heart right where we need it. May we hear it in our very spirit and our soul and walk away knowing that we've heard from you this day. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Maybe see it. I'd rather have Jesus than silver
Jesus is the sweetest name I know, and he's just the
Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. Thou art Bibles to uh, Exodus chapter 4. I want to begin reading at the 27th verse. And let's stand together as we read God's Word. Exodus t- chapter 4, verse 27. I'm reading this morning from the New International Version. The Lord said to Aaron, Go into the desert to meet Moses. So he met Moses at the mountain of God and kissed him. Then Moses told Aaron everything that God had sent him to say, and also about all the miraculous signs he had commanded him to perform. Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of of the Israelites, and Aaron told them everything that the Lord had said to Moses. He also performed the signs before the people, and they believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. Father, how comforting to know that you have seen our misery and have compassion on us, and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. I think it's fair to say that Christians in our country are, for the most part, a little stunned. They're walking around like people who are shell-shocked. They've seen high government officials, even members of the Department of Justice and the FBI, in a conspiracy to overturn the last election that took place in this country. And if you'll remember, it was this time last year that we were told that the person who's investigating all these crimes would very soon be bringing these crimes to light and very soon be charging those people. It was this time a year ago. And we're still waiting. (coughs) Justice delayed is justice denied. While much of what they've done has been publicly exposed, they have not been prosecuted for their various crimes. They write books, go on TV shows, and laugh at the Constitution. They seem untouchable and above the law. And the rule of law in America appears to be breaking down completely. Riots have broken out in the streets of our major cities, and unbelievably, the city fathers have supported these destructive rampages and allowed them to go unchecked and unpunished. Those very leaders have turned on our police departments. 
and the police officers all over the country, because of the pressure they now live under, are beginning to retire in unheard of numbers, and many police officers are just resigning and walking off the job. I heard yesterday that the retirements this year in New York City for policemen is 400% what it was a year ago. Small wonder when they have no support from those who were voted to protect us. Amen. The mobs have turned on statues of heroes and leaders of the past and have destroyed them and no one stands up against the vandalism against the beautiful art that we have spread around our country. Even members of Congress have encouraged and defended these vandals. I actually heard the Speaker of the House say, well, I haven't even got my mother's old earrings. I don't hold on to old things. They're not really important in speaking about these statues being destroyed. Somebody needs to check her expiration date. <laughs> Many innocent people have been hurt and many killed and there's no one to investigate the murders or to arrest the criminals. Churches have been shut down and pastors have been threatened by state and local government officials. Churches have been attacked and damaged and at one church that was burned there was a threat painted on the sidewalk of the burned out church. Yes, I think many Christians are walking around shell-shocked. Shell -shocked. Imagine, in just four months, we've gone from the land of milk and honey to a land of discouragement and fear. In four months. We're not unlike the Jews wandering about in the desert. That place where they went, called the Desert of Zen, and in many of the books, they call it the desert of sin. But that seems to be the place where we currently reside. Amen. I want us to think about the book of Exodus this morning. Because if we're going to live in a desert, we're going to need some help on how to do that. And the Bible gives us some directions on how to do it. Now, when I was a boy, you may not know this, I grew up in the state of West Virginia. And uh, I don't know if you know this about the state of West Virginia. One of the, the bad things about the state is, depending on whether you're a person who studies snakes or not, uh, that there are an awful lot of snakes in the state of West Virginia. They're in the countryside and they're in the cities. They're all around. And there's a lot of them. And I was taught as a little boy to walk with my head down and pay attention when I was going through the woods or walking anywhere. Because at any time you might cross the path of one of these snakes and some of them are poisonous. And some that are not poisonous have the ability to give you a pretty good bite and maybe uh, cause quite a bad infection. And so I learned to walk with my head down. And it seems like to me that most of you were brought up in West Virginia, too, because lately you've been walking with your head down. But in the desert, that's not a good idea. You better get your head up. We need to face reality. When you look out into the desert, it's vast. You really can't see the end of it. It just goes on and on to the horizon and disappears over the horizon. Doesn't matter how far you walk into it, you never quite seem to come to the edge of it. It's just enormous. The idea that it's endless leads us to depression and discouragement. And I think that sometimes people look at the series of problems that we're going through as a nation and there's a kind of a fear-driven kind of discouragement that's settling down on people. Do you remember why the Jews were in the desert? They were slaves. And God set them free and brought them out of Egypt and was leading them to the place where he wanted them to be. Now, they had to go through the desert to get there. But let me just say that being in the desert with God is a lot better than being a slave. Being free and in the desert is better than 
being a slave and being in Egypt. And we need to understand that a person who sins is a slave of sin. And when God brings us out, he brings us out. But yes, sometimes we go through a desert. Sometimes we go through hard times. Sometimes we face those. But we need to follow God's direction. And, and when I talk to people about uh, obeying God's clearly revealed will for their life, I think that's an important thing for me. It has been all my life. When I talk to people about that, sometimes their eyes glaze over. And I'm like, Pastor, we don't want to hear that again. But the fact is, it's the key to everything. If we're going to get out of the desert, you're going to have to have some directions. And if you followed God in the desert, the only way you're going to get out is to follow him back out. Right. Listen to Exodus 13. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road to the Philistine country, which was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the, led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. Well, now here we are, Lord. There's this, the desert in Egypt on one side and the Red Sea on the other. And uh oh, here comes Pharaoh and his army. What are we going to do? Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Let me tell you something. God knows how to, to provide for his people, how to take care of them. And if we follow God's direction, we can count on God's protection. We don't need to fear these people. They're, most of them are a bunch of snowflakes anyway. I ran into two of them in Washington, D.C. They didn't impress me much. They must have been about, I don't know, 5'2". They were dressed in their little black outfit and they had their little scary black designer mask on that somebody had bought for them. And they were running through the streets, uh, you know, with a, with a crowd of about 600 others. They, they didn't frighten me much. In fact, when they came by, I just sort of made fun of them. I said, oh, are you so ugly that you have to wear a mask? And then I remembered that this morning because I had one on. <laughs> Maybe. And they just stopped and looked at me like, what? <laughs> and then they ran on down the street because the police were behind them and going to arrest them for being morons. I'm pretty sure it's against the law in Washington, D.C. And I think they ought to go up to the house first. If we follow God's direction, we can count on him to protect us. And whatever he has to do to make a way for us, he'll part the Red Sea for us if it's necessary. And we can go across on dry ground. You know, I've been there. No, not the Red Sea. But I've been to the place where they filmed the Ten Commandments. And I saw the place where they crossed the Red Sea. It was actually just a little pond. And inside that pond was a big metal device. Somebody would punch a button and you'd hear all this shh kinds of sounds. And the steel would slowly come up in the water. And the water kept running over it like waterfalls. But it held the water back. And then suddenly the middle of the pond dried up and, and, and you can drive across it. No, it wasn't like that. God can do things that we can't even imagine. And is not afraid to use his almighty power in the behalf of those who he loves. And people who stand up to become the enemies of God have no idea what kind of a fight they're picking. It's not us who ought to be afraid. And we need to be clear about this business. That, that, that no matter what, that if we follow God, we can count on his protection. I'm not saying we need to become like them. I don't think we should walk around with a sock filled with locks so that we can bash people's heads in. I don't think we ought to get a large group of people and pick on one or two of those people all by themselves. Those two would have been easy for me because I was brought up in a neighborhood where street fighting was kind of normal. And I don't believe those two uh, people had ever been in a knuckle fight themselves their whole life. 
Somebody gave them a bag of stones to throw and a black outfit to put on and they thought they were tough. They were still snowflakes, just in a clever disguise. If we follow God's direction, we can count on God's provision as well. Let me tell you something. In the desert, water is scarce. I was careful in reading through Exodus again yesterday, and in all those chapters I found 37 times that water's mentioned. It's a big deal in the desert. But listen, Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur, and three days they traveled the desert without finding water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That's why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, what are we to drink? And then Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a piece of wood and he threw it into the water and the water became sweet. God will provide for us. Listen to me. You're in the desert. Drink the water the Lord gives you. Amen. And be thankful. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you provided. Yes. Food's hard to find in the desert. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert. And there was the glory of the Lord appearing like a cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I've heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight they will eat meat. And in the morning they will find they will be filled with bread. Then you will know I am the Lord your God. And that evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the dew was gone, thin flakes of frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. And when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. We need to eat the food that the Lord gives us while we're living in the desert. God will provide what you need to eat. Eat it and be thankful. Thank you, Lord, for what you provided for us. If we follow God's direction, we can count on the end of the journey being just what God promised it would be. And so Moses climbed up on Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab on top of Pisgah, across from Jericho. This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your own eyes. He got from one side of the desert to the other side of the desert. The journey sometimes is difficult, sometimes it's long, but it ends up the way God promises it's going to end up. We need to understand that this is always going to be true. Let me read you the end of the trip. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. This is not our home, folks. It's just a temporary dwelling where we live. This earth is temporal. It's not eternal. We're eternal. We're intended to be in an eternal city whose builder and framer is God. And so I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them, and will be their God. And he will wipe every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death, and no more mourning, or crying, or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. Then he said, write this down. These words are trustworthy and true. We're in the desert with God, but, the, but the, the end of the trip is going to be what he says it's going to be. There's a lot of people who, who talk about heaven and hell as if somehow it's kind of some kind of a joke. And they make fun of heaven. Well, it's pie in the sky by and by. My answer to you is, well, there's either pie in the sky by and by or there's not. Every Father's Day here at this church, there's usually pie. We usually give a pie to every one of the men. That 
This year, we had the virus. And it wiped out the pies. Somebody said to me, well, we're having church on Father's Day. Are we going to have pies for the men? I said, we canceled service on Mother's Day. You don't expect me to have pies for men. <laughs> Actually, the way I answered him was, would you please explain to me, is it seven knots or 13 knots that are tied into a noose when you're hanging somebody? And they wrote back and said it was 13. And I said, well, I wanted to be hung properly when I ordered the women to make pies after they got nothing on Mother's Day. So that when they lynched me, it would be done the right way. I want it to be done the right way. He's promised us an ending. He's promised us how this is going to end. And we know because we're following him. If we follow him, we come to that ending. You get it? Obeying God's clearly revealed will is the steps that lead us to heaven's door. We need to realize that and recognize that while we're in a desert, and there's a lot of frightening things going on around us, but it's just the devil saying, boo. You're not going to let us scare you. There's no boogeyman under the bed, and he's not in the closet, and he's not going to come out and get you. There are a few silly children out in the streets acting like they are. Silly children with too much money and too little sense. And it's, and it's time for the adults in this country to stand up and spank them and send them back to college. So they can be furly, further confused by those people who refer to themselves as professors. We are actually traveling through a desert. And it is a desert of sin. But listen to that sentence again. We are traveling through a desert. We're not stopping in the middle of it. We're traveling through it. And in this desert, we're never alone. I will never leave you. They, they saw the pillar of cloud during the day and the pillar of fire at night. They knew God's presence was always with them. Well, pastor, we don't have a, a, a pillar of cloud during the day. You, you have God's holy word. You have the earnest, the Holy Spirit that's given to you, which from time to time lets you know that you're on the right road, going the right direction, and, and you get a sense of God's will. There are times where God works little miracles in your life, and you see them, and it may not be for everybody to know, but you know in your own heart, God did this for me. You know what those are? John Hay used to call those, and I believe they are. They are signposts on the highway of holiness to let you know you're going the right direction. And as you walk along, you know that you're walking with God. And the Holy Spirit from time to time does those things, not because he loves playing tricks on us, but from time to time we need that sense of encouragement and a sense of touch from, from the divine and to know that God is present with us. And that we're going the right direction. And to fill our hearts with joy and courage in, in the face of the things that are going on. We're not going to allow people to do those kinds of things around us. We're going to stand up for what's true and what's right. We're going to a promised land and a promised city whose builder is God. And we are in a dangerous place. It's a desert. It's a dangerous place. But we need to follow God. Because if we do follow him, he's going to bring us through all of those dangers. And if I understood my Bible clearly when I was reading it, he said, casting all your cares on him because he cares for you. Who's he? Yes. Almighty God. Yeah. I don't want to be caught mistreating the children of Almighty God when he stands up. I don't want to be in that place. I just want to be obediently encouraging the people of God and continuing to put my feet one in front of the other in following his clearly revealed will for my life. I'm doing that right now, folks. Let me tell you something. I came here yesterday with my play clothes on to get out and cut brush with all the people who were cutting brush. But on my way from, from the Sweezy Mansion over there to here, God, the Holy Spirit started talking to me about a desert. And the sermon I already had typed and printed and in my office had to go by the side. And while you guys were cutting brush, I was in here cutting brush. And the result of what we're having here is because of God speaking to me 
on the three miles from my house to here. We need to let God, the Holy Spirit, lead us. And we need to follow what He tells us to do. And we need to permit Him to encourage us. God sent this message to you to tell you to lift up your heads. Because redemption is nearer than we ever thought it was before. And these silly people who are doing the silly things they are. Must not be permitted to distract or discourage us. Or keep us from obeying God's clearly revealed will for our life. Oh no. We've got to go on with what God's will is. And do it wholeheartedly. Because the victory is already ours. The devil's defeated. He knows he's defeated. He just keeps lying about it because, you know, he's a liar. But we need to hold on to God and follow Him and obey His clearly revealed will for our life and determine that we're not going to let the, 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 the news cycle control how we feel about life. Now, I've heard some people say, well, I just turn the news off and I feel better about things. Well, if the country's on fire, I want to know when the fire's getting close to my own house. I think I need to stay informed about what's really happening around us. But on the other hand, if you can't handle it emotionally, you might be smarter to turn it off. I'm pretty sure there's a cartoon channel somewhere. There might even be a Christian channel. Hey, what do you know? This service might even be on the internet. And it might cause you to smile. Let's stand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Your oath and your covenant and your blood, they protect me in the whelming flood. Lord, we glorify you. We praise you today because you're the Lord. And you led us out of Egypt, out of sin, out of slavery to sin. And set us free by saving our sins as we repented of our sins. Saving us from our sins and cleansing us, Lord. And making us your own dear children. By sanctifying us by the power of your Holy Spirit. You give us grace and strength every day to serve you. And Lord, yeah, we may be walking in the desert, but we're walking with you. And that's all right. Because you're with us. Help us to obey your clearly revealed will for our lives to follow you because we know that you provide all we need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus and that you'll provide all the protection that we need as well. And Lord, give us wisdom to know what to do and what to say in this present generation to make the country that we're living in a better place. We ask that in the name of our Lord and we pray that you give us the grace to do it. Amen. God's blessing on you. See you tonight, 6 o'clock.